Greetings, astrophiles. This is Pat Cosgrove for Cosgrove's Cosmos. It's been a while since I've given you any further updates on my Whispering Skies Observatory project, and there's a good reason for that. Once it became operational, I spent all of my time imaging as it should be. But I have accomplished a lot of small projects, and I wanted to do one more update. And I have a few more projects that I'll be working on in the future, and I wanted to share those with you. So, let's get started. Before starting the updates, I thought I would show you what I've been doing with the observatory since it's been operational. We've had some clear skies and I've had some opportunity to begin to collect some new images. Let's take a look. In my last video, we had installed the French drains, the gravel around the observatory, and then we had graded and seeded the lawn as part of the lawn restoration. When I took the last video, we had just mowed the lawn for the first time and things were looking good. Since then, we've had a very hot and very dry summer. And in the heat of the summer, it seemed like the new grass withered and crabgrass took over. And it was pretty unsightly. A few weeks back we had the lawn treated with crabgrass killer and some fertilizer. And this actually helped quite a bit. It killed off the weeds and the remaining grass that was there uh, took benefit from the uh, fertilizer and started to come back in. But it's still pretty much hurting because of the fact we've had no rain. So in preparation for the fall rains, we have now aerated and reseeded and we're hoping that the lawn will establish itself a little bit more. It's not too bad now, but as you can see, it is far from great. So now let's take a look at a couple of the projects I've worked on for the exterior of the observatory. First thing we worked on was the window shutters. We chose them, got them painted. My wife chose the color and did the painting. And we picked the blue to sort of match some of the colors that were in the observatory sign. I think it does what we wanted it to do. It dresses up the windows quite nicely. Next, we focused on painting the exterior of the observatory where it needed painting. The door and the trim were, was one item that had to be handled, as well as the trim board here at the top that covers up the tracks. So those were painted white. Uh, my wife is the painter of the family did that. The steel also was painted. Last time you saw the steel, it had the primer that had the sort of rust color. I took an angle grinder, ground it down where there was rust spots, reprimed it and then put two coats of a nice rust-oleum gray which i think is compatible with the rest of the observatory and it makes the framework stand out less i think when you're looking at it from the house now that we've covered what we did on the outside of the observatory let's move inside there are a few projects we've finished in here and a few more we're planning one of the things I really wanted to do was to seal the concrete floor. I didn't want moisture getting in and I didn't want dust coming up. To do this, I chose a sealer and densifier known as Lithitech 9500 Ultra Concentrate. This comes in a one gallon size, which can then be diluted to make up to five gallons of solution, which is easily sprayed on, uh, making application relatively straightforward and easy. I've now stripped everything out of the observatory that's on the floor and I've cleaned the floor best I can anyways and I'm getting prepared to put a sealer densifier on the floor. So this is kind of my before view. 
after should look just the same because once it's dried, it should look exactly like it does now. The floor is all sealed now. Dried pretty quickly, looks pretty uniform. And the sealer has a densifier, which should seal, cut down on the cement dust that can often happen with a slab. Another thing I wanted to deal with is the lighting for the observatory. So let's close the roof and see what the observatory looks like inside during the daytime. It's daytime, but it's still pretty dark in the observatory. Some light comes through where the rollers are. And most of the light that's coming in is coming through the windows, even though I have blackout curtains on it. There's some light that comes around the outside. In addition to that, I put a line of red LEDs around the lower area of the observatory. This just gives a little bit of light at night when I have to maneuver amongst the scopes and I don't want to bump into them. I also have some LEDs that are sitting in the well of each pier. Now those are not fully installed yet. I have them wired in place, but they'll be actually stuck to the base of the piers. Right now they're sort of laying around in position. But between those two, it gives me a little bit of light to navigate in here at night uh, without really disturbing my uh, image capture and making sure I don't fall down a well or uh, bump into the scopes. And finally, I have white lights, which allow me to work in the observatory during the daytime with the blackout drapes down, or in the evening when I want to work. And the light's coming from two things. I have a string of fairly bright white LEDs that is going around the peripheral of the walls, at the top of the walls. Uh, in addition to that, I have two spotlights here, which are pointing up to the ceiling, which gives some reflected light. And there are two more here, which are doing the same thing. They're pointing up to the ceiling, give me some reflected light. So this gives me a pretty good lighting uh, that's not too obnoxious when I have to do work um, in the observatory. Over here, I have a pretty big area of blank wall. And my thought is I'm going to set this up as a picture area. I'm going to put some uh, plywood up, some walling up, I'm going to paint it dark gray, and then I'm going to have framed pictures hanging on it so that when people visit the observatory they can see some samples of my work. I also have a spot over here I might do that with and a section over here as well. This is the wall where my uh, countertop and cabinets are going to go. I now have a design and I've chosen the cabinets and the countertop I want to put in. Now it's a question of ordering, ordering them, getting them in, and getting them installed. Here's the basic design I'm going with. I have a countertop across the whole wall and then on the right side I'll have an area for my computer and there's a knee hole in there and a place for my monitors above it. On the left side will be kind of my tool area and I have another knee hole there, and I have storage uh, cabinets below and storage cabinets above. One thing I did add recently is I put an armature on the monitor so that I can swing this at different angles and pull it a little bit closer. When I'm doing certain operations on the scope uh, and I wanna see something on the screen, I can kind of angle it and bring it a little bit closer to what the scope I'm working on so I get a little bit better light. That's just a simple armature which bolts on one of the main poles. Well that about wraps it up for today's update. In my next update we'll be talking about the countertops and cabinet project. Until then, this is Pat Cosgrove signing off for Cosgrove's Cosmos, wishing you clear skies and excellent seeing.